Hey guys, Little V here. Uh, I'm just taking a break. I've been working on a tune here, and uh, I figure I would walk you through how at least I approach getting like a basic rhythm metal guitar tone for uh, for recordings here. So um, this is uh, I'm not gonna say what this is because it says right there what it is. If not, well, you know, I guess you'll probably pick it up from the melody. But uh, it's one of the covers I've been working on, and uh, I'm just gonna as well give that a lesson too before we get too far into this. So right now there's no real leads or melodies yet, this is just basic rhythm, it's just two guitars, bass and drums as you can see there. The drums are just programmed in for the moment so they're not the final final thing I'm doing right now. I will go and play an actual part later on, but uh, anyways, back to the topic of this uh, of this little video here, this is how I, I get a guitar tone. So uh, if you're wondering, I am currently using my Hellraiser, the uh, seven string here with the DiMarzio pickups in them, and uh, yeah, we're just going to start straight from scratch here. And uh, so I'm um, currently you know, should be coming in right now. So right now, currently that's just straight guitar tone, and I'm um, on both pickups right now. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna switch to the uh, bridge pickup here. And we're gonna get that going first here. So. I've recently started using a uh, pod farm a bit more. Uh, I used to use uh, down here. You'll see amplitude. I was using amplitude at one point. Uh, I was using PV's revolver at one point, and uh, I was using uh, guitar rig originally back with the metal effects stuff. And uh, I think I've I think I dig pod farm the best. It's uh, just just it's it's sheer qua like quantity of of amplifiers here. So when you open up the program here, you first get something like this. Now I've set the default to a completely different amplifier, but uh, you can see here you have quite a bit of amps to work with. That's just amps. That's not even the actual cabs, because then there's the cabs. And then uh, your different distortions, your dynamics, your filters and stuff. And you can navigate the windows this way as well, too. So you can literally go through it. And because uh, they're just for copyright reasons, they're obviously not called what they're what they look like, just so they have some, a picture of it. So you get the idea. So that's like a Mesa. That's an orange and they call it a citrus, you know, just to be clever. These are, uh, that's a Marshall, you know, stuff like that. So, uh, you know, there's your black faces. You know, they call it a black face, but it's, uh, we all know what that is. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, what I usually start with is I usually start with either a uh, dual or tri triple uh, rectifier or a Marshall. I'm still experimenting with tones, so I, this this changes all the time. But uh, currently, this is the one I have set on right now. This is when I usually start off with. <laughs> So, I'm um, also currently in standard, and B is dropped to A, if anyone's wondering what tuning I'm in right now. So, uh, let's look at uh, the Brit here. So right now, we currently have gain almost all the way down. So we're going to bring that up a little bit there. And we're also going to add a noise gate shortly here, because it starts getting a little bit like, uh, a little bit of... A little bit fuzzy there, but for the moment that gate's on there, we're going to use that. So, I don't like maxing gain. I like leaving it about at about 6, a little bit past 6. Uh, bass, bass, I know a lot of guitar players like their bass. I like keeping it down at like 4. I don't like going too much on bass. I like max and mids, or like very close to mids. I like bringing treble up to almost max, but not quite. Presence all the way. And then I'll volume a little bit more too, and now it sounds more like this. You can almost back bass off a little bit more. And by that I mean go up, apparently. Alright, so it goes something like that. Okay, now, so this uh, hum doesn't cut through too much, I'm going to go back here, we're going to go to dynamics, and we're going to go noise gate. We're just going to gate that out right now. And the nice thing is, is it's, uh, you don't want to go too much, otherwise it starts taking some of the high end off the tones. As you can hear there. 
So uh, I'm going to put the decay right down to 0%. So it's instant. And that should be still let us ring out there. That'll work for now. So uh, cabinets. Uh, you got a few different cabinet choices in a uh, in um, with this program here, like quite a few. I think there's 24 uh, guitar to work with. Everything from you know you like your small, you know you like your little uh, fenders all the way up to you know you got like a line six two by twelve or you know your big uh, 412s or a 410 or whichever one to really work with. I'm still experimenting with a lot of them. I've actually found I usually I'm using a 412 right now, but uh, I think my favorite tones aren't the 412s. I think they're like the 410s and sometimes even the 212s. They're just I don't know, there's something about them. They're just kind of, it's a little bit cleaner. I don't know. But uh, for the moment, we're going to be using uh, the uh, Brit uh, Celestian uh, T75s here. Uh, this is the one I usually use the most. And uh, we're going to have a 57 on off axis. Now, I like off axis a bit more because it brings a little more, it has a little more fullness to it. So if it's on axis, and if it's off axis, you can hear there. So, there's got a couple of other options too. We also have a Brit uh, Celestian V30s. Some guys like that kind of tone, but we're on a 7 string here, so I'm going more for mids, not so much bass. This also was the tread plate. That one's probably the bassiest. Again, this is more of like a basic tutorial on this kind of setting here, so... You know, if you're for your own for your own uh, tones, it's just a matter of playing around with different what you have, right? So uh, this is this is definitely the ones I'm kind of more going towards. All right, so we're doing what I don't like doing in, in an actual live rig is we're going to add a distortion pedal, and we have a uh, a tube screamer here. I just call it a screamer in this one. We're going to put it right before the amp. And uh, now I'm also going to adjust this here. I'm going to bring the tone up a little bit. I'm going to bring the gain up just a bit, but I'm going to bring the drive all the way down. Not all the way down, but pretty close. A little bit too much gain. I, want, I like uh, notes being ringed through. I like a more dynamic. I don't want it just being a like, solid wall of death. So, uh, and it's going to be a sweet spot. And like I said, it also depends on which amps you're using too. Like this is the amp I'm liking the most right now, but before I was using the, uh, like a Mesa dual rectifier and even a triple rectifier in some, in some, uh, cases there. So okay. So we got that going for us now. Now I'm going to grab a preamp. I'm going to go modern. I like this one the most. There's a couple different ones, but modern just, I don't know, there's something about it I like the most. So, high pass frequency. We're going to high pass it at about 80 hertz. Because uh, when we put it into the mix, like when we start recording this, it's going to get a little, uh, I don't want it to get in the way of the bass drum. So, we're going to bring bass down ever so slightly. We're going to go to about uh 240 hertz approximately give it a little bit more of a low end so it's kind of like your fullness of your guitar tone is right about there high mids we're going to go about one 1 1.1 1 .1 or so uh kilohertz that's kind of where we get like our pick attack from Okay, so I'm going to give a little more treble. Just a touch. And we're also going to bring the bass high pass or frequency up a little bit. In order to like to 45, that looks good. All right, so starting to sound a lot better. So now what we're going to do, 
is I'm going to run it through a compressor. You don't really need a compressor so much when you're working with high gain amps, it kind of compresses itself. <laughs> So I'm only going to compress it a little bit. We're going to go maybe like 10, minus 10 dB. And uh, as far as gain, you'll see how that output looks. Yeah, that output will be fine. I also like to check the harmonics on it too, because a little bit of compression will bring the harmonics out just a little bit. So if we go like there. Also keep in mind I have the noise get going on too, so I could take the noise get off and it could go forever, but you know. Okay, so we got that going for us now. Last, I'm going to add in a little bit of an EQ. Now, usually I do this in the program, but since this is a line six tutorial, on the actual thing here, I don't want to. I want to use for the plugins that are in this program in particular. So, uh, just to put the point across, we're going to go back to about 80 hertz, and we're just going to outright just high pass it, just to make sure nothing gets in the way of the bass drum. And there's a specific frequency I want over here. Uh, 2.5 approximately. This is where you get kind of like your really high kind of stuff coming out of and if this is too much it starts hurting your ears so watch your ears guys so I like to back it off just a tad and that way it doesn't hurt your ears nearly as much now I'm gonna go right here let's just, let's just try this. Let's go a little bit more on the uh, uh, one kilohertz. So let's put it like right there. Now you can hear the pick attacks a little bit stronger. Also keep in mind it depends on how you're going to attack it, right? So you can go flat on like so. Or you can kind of angle a little bit too and get more of the pick in it. So there's a little bit of, there's a couple ways you can approach how you actually play the guitar itself. So. And just because I want to test it, let's go, uh, let's try uh, at about three. Let's give it a. Bring it up a little more. back to this I'm gonna bring up the bass a little bit more since we have the high pass going might as well bring the bass up just slightly get a little bit more fuller A nice little uh, chunky guitar tones. Let's hear that with. Uh, I'm gonna turn. I'm gonna mute both of these guitar tracks. Let's hear that with the recording, shall we? Back it down a little bit. Sounds pretty heavy there. Now, I if you notice here, I have a left and a right. You don't have to do that with this program. I'd like doing that because I'm just more used to it that way. Now let's bring this back up to a. Uh, let's bring this back up to zero. I'm using my uh, controller here, so I don't have to actually touch it here. So, the nice thing about Pod Farm 
is, let's get it back open here, you can make two of the same track, or two of different tracks. So we're going to copy the current tone, and we're going to back both of the volumes off, because this will be really, really loud on the uh, volume side. It looks like it's going to be pretty, pretty much obnoxious. <laughs> So we have A, B, and both. So you can thicken it up a little bit here. Now, the way we can do this and make it really thick is we're going to grab a delay pedal here. We're going to go just like a go digital. I'm going to throw it right at the end here. So you can hear that delay already going in here. So... What we're going to do is we're going to put the mix all the way to the top. We're going to make it 20 milliseconds. I'm going to make the feedback really low. I'm going to leave the EQ at the same here. Now we're going to put one side of the right and one side of the left. And the difference without it would be like this. Turn that off there. So let's bring that back down to where it was, about there. And let's try it with the delay on it now. Apologize, I forgot to mute the tracks there. So now it's a lot more full. And you can do this trick on pretty much any guitar tone. I did it on uh, the Legend of, or yeah, Legend of Zelda one with um <laughs> this is a Legend of Zelda one, but uh, on the the funk one I did that. I took one guitar track and I just put the delay on it so I didn't have to go back and do it twice. And it's uh it's really handy if you only want to have to play the part once. <laughs> So yeah, that's how I create my uh, guitar tones. Now, of course, this is by no way, a no, uh, no uh, way. This is not like a, you know, the the ultimate way of getting a guitar tone. This is just how I like doing my guitar tones. Also, if you probably noticed, I'm not much of a guitar player. I am a drummer. So, uh, yeah, this is uh, just kind of like a, almost like a launching point where you can kind of go from, and then from there you can uh, you can experiment with your own amps because different amps will give you different tones, uh, different stuff like that. Like for example, if we just put it back to A here. To the middle there for the moment so if we could swap out this with this, say a dual rectifier oops that was the wrong amplifier let's try that again shall we and then pull back to my same speaking configuration but the room at zero same kind of idea and then that also gives you another round of things you can tweak. So if I go back to approximately where we were before. And then you get those kind of tones. Then, of course, you can mix and match, right? So you can use so how I have this tread paint, this uh, dual rectifier down here. Put them both together. Also, with the two different speakers, you'll create some, uh, you know, with the two different uh, cabinets and the two different mic positions. And if we want to get really fancy, we can go like that. This, of course, will be really a big draw on your computer, but you can definitely do it this way as well, too. 
and go right and left. <laughs> I'm gonna find the sweet spot here. Hold on a second, guys. Actually, I think the sweet spot's all the way to the left and the right. So now that we have that going for us, why don't we take the actual track and pan to one side? Then not only take this, but then duplicate it and then put it to the left side, and you get a really thick sounding guitar tones. All right, guys. Well, that's pretty much all I wanted to show you for this. I'm gonna get back to uh, working on this, put some leads over top of it, and a couple other things. And uh, hope you guys found this uh, informative. If uh, you are my subscribers, this should be up. Well, it depends on how uh, how long it takes to shoot the video. That's the that's the hard part. If you are not one of my subscribers, feel free to head up my channel. I do a lot of uh, I'm gonna do a lot of just random covers. I've been pulling out of a hat, and uh, I also have a complete uh mass effect um uh tribute album there for uh oh, and it's for free download as well too so if you want to go hit up all that stuff there uh feel free to hopefully this was informative guys uh this is little v signing off rock on peace out see you next time